Hi, I'm Jeff with Planning Pod. Now we're going to look at how to create and get started with events and using the events tools. So we're going to click on the events tab in our account. And in the far left side here are the groups for the event and you can create your own event groups that you can place events into. Uh, next to that is the events list right here, which will list all your events and to view an event, just click on the event and then that will pull up all the event summary information as well as links to the event tools inside of that event. And if you have dozens of events and need to search, you can just click in the search field there and search for your events by keyword or you can sort by name or by date by clicking on those buttons right there. And if you go all the way over to the right to the drop down menu right here, we can click on that and we'll click on the Manage Event Groups button to create a new event group. Not only does this let you create multiple event groups, but you can also set a particular group as the default that opens up when you click on your Events tab in your account. But we're going to leave the default set to All for right now. And once we hit the Save button, you can see right here is our new event group. We have not placed any events into it yet, but we will here shortly. So now let's add a new event by clicking on the Add Event button here in the top right corner. The first thing we can do is place this event into a group. So we're going to put in it into the group we just created. And then we're going to add our event name and the venue location for this event. And just an FYI, the event name will be sorted alphabetically and or numerically. Then you can also create a start date for the event as well as an end date if this event goes on longer than just one day. And then you can add the start and finish times for the event in these fields right here. And once we've entered this, in the next blank below is a very important field because this area is where you can give your contacts access to this event. Now, if you have already given a contact login access to your planning account in the contacts area, which we discussed in another video, this setting then grants them access to this event. If you have not given a client login access to your account, then they will not have access to the event and attaching to them to this event is for your reference only. So we're going to click in this field and then we're going to add four contacts who can now access this event. So that when they log in, they'll be able to see this event and use the tools within it. The next field is also very important because this is where you associate a vendor with an event. And once a vendor has been associated with an event, you can then attach a vendor to things like itinerary items or budget line items. And this is without giving a vendor access to your account or to this event. This also will display the vendor contact information inside of the event to anyone who has permission to view the event without giving them access to your contacts. So we're going to click in that field and attach or associate three vendors to this event. And then we are going to click the save button. And now here is our new event right here and we're going to click on it. And at the top, you can see all the information we just added. And if we need to make changes to this, we can just go up here and click on the edit event button and it will pull up the form that we just created. And then we can go in here and say we want to add another contact or um, get to give them access to this event. We'll click on that there. We can then also change the dates of the events. We can change the times and any other information in this form we can edit. Once we're done, we'll click the save button. And now those changes have been saved. And the other buttons at the top allow you to archive an event and delete an event. And we'll show you how to archive an event here shortly. These links at the top here give you access to the event tools, which you can see right now, right here. And by clicking on the arrow links at the right, you can go into that tool. Also, you can uh, 
download PDFs of the event. There's an overview PDF, an event book, which provides every detail inside of the event, and also a vendor list PDF. By clicking on this link, you can view the vendors you have associated with this event. And by clicking on the drop down button there, you can see additional details for that vendor, including phone numbers. And finally, by clicking here, you can view the people who you have assigned to this event. And again, you can click on the details button there to view more information about that contact. Now we're going to go back to the event tools link and we're going to click on one of the tools so we can show you how to get into one of the tools. We'll go to the budget tool by clicking on the arrow link to that tool, which brings us into the budget. And since we haven't done anything yet, you can go up here to add your first budget item. From here, you can access all the other tools inside of this event in this list right here. For example, if you want to upload files or if you want to start building floor plans, you can access that tool right here. In addition, if you want to go into the tools of another event, just click on the event in this list right here and it will pull up the tools for that event. So we're going to go into the budget for this particular event. And as you can see, we've already created quite a few budget items for this event. And to return to the main events area, just go over here to the main navigation bar and click on events. Say we're all finished with the event and we want to remove that event so it doesn't count against our planning pod package. We can simply go up here to the archive event button and click on that. And now that event has been archived and no longer counts against your allotted events inside of your planning pod package. And you can always unarchive it later if you need to go back and access that information. Well, that's how to get started with events, but please view some of our other videos about how to use the tools inside of your events.